when they announced a coup. And I, and I looked at him and said, this sounds very fishy, and the, the consequences are going to be very detrimental. Then I didn't know those involved. And then later on I realized that they are from uh, Riyak Masar's people. And I said, this is one dangerous time bomb, and we must do something about it. Uh, unfortunately, I had to, <coughs> in fact, I was also in France, but I had to cut short fly at night to come in in order to make sure that I receive my colleagues heads of state. Uh, the first day that we proposed, we were told that uh, we should push it because a lot of heads of state want to come. And uh, I told him, you're pushing it closer to the new year, and I don't want anybody to have an excuse to say I'm not coming because it's the new year. He said, no, 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 we have got the assurances from the secretariat that if you push it, you will have more heads of state. At that point, I think they said nine confirmed. And I thought, I would rather deal with nine than with nobody. And unfortunately, they, we were advised by the secretariat to push it closer to the new year, uh, end of new year. And uh, unfortunately, this is what has happened. But you, they are heavily represented here by you, I, I cannot call it a failure. The mere fact that you are here uh, uh, is a success for us. We must also make sure that whatever we have decided is implemented. One chronic illness for the AU, and I think also West African uh, sub-regional group in ECOWAS, is to take decisions, make decisions and they are never implemented. Nobody's going to take us seriously. We must, as a council, we must make sure that our decisions are implemented to the letter. Because if we were a United Nations Security Council decision on an African matter uh, where we are not consulted, we will want to implement it. My dear brothers and sisters, it is sad for Africa. Africa is the only continent where one country can call all of us and we are rushing there. Be it Christmas or Tobaski or uh, Ramadan, we want to go and sit down as a continent. And one country sits us here and gives us a lecture. And in most cases, they tell us about governance. Those who have called, I, I, now they don't talk to me about governance. Because I, used to, I asked them, what, when was governance invented? Oh, human rights. Say, so, oh, you, you the British, you were, you were here for 400 years. And out of those 400 years, not one Gambian was elected to a British parliament. Not even one Gambian was a secretary for the colonial government. They brought secretaries uh, 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 to, 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 to even the district commissioner had a British secretary. Africans were reduced to clerks, and that's why there was what they call standard nine. Uh, standard seven was like a PhD in this country. For 400 years, none, no Gambia was trained to be a, either a scientist or a medical doctor, not even a nurse. What our governance was that? Now, after, because when we talk about democracy, democracy was invented by the Greeks way before colonialism. Today, now, during colonialism, nobody knew about human rights in Africa. Just recently I asked them at the UN, did the West realize today that Africans are human beings? Because the issue of human rights and democracy never existed uh, for the Gambia 14, uh, 47 years ago, before independence. So now they know that Africans are human beings, but they, the colonial masters, are in a better position to teach African leaders democracy. When we had independence, there was no air conditioner in this country. They were just sealing fans. And at the time of independence, we didn't even have three-story buildings in this country. The British were here for 400 years. 400 years of occupation, we didn't even have one university or a college. 400 years of British occupation. The British built only one high school throughout their stay in the country. 
and two hospitals. Now, we are independent today. And they say, oh, Germany is a dictator. I'm proud of that. Because they don't mess with the African dictators who love their country. I'm a dictator to them, but I'm a hero to the Gambian people and the African people, and that is what matters to me. For 400 years, we didn't have a university. 19 years of my government, we have so many hospitals, and we have a, uni a world-class university, and we, we have more than 100 high schools built in 19 years, and two private universities. And that is a dictatorship. That is bad governance. But that is not what they want for Africa. They want us to continue to kill each other. And then they say, yes, Africans. Because remember that we, we Africans, because of our attitude, we help them to rip their people off. Now, somebody will raise maybe say a million, a hundred million for South Sudan. And maybe only 10 million will end up in South Sudan. Conflicts in Africa is a way of encouraging corruption in the West, and most of us do not even know it. So, after 48 years of independence, Gambia cannot go back and look at the same people that colonize us for development. We want to be dependent on our own resources and on, on our own initiative. Unfortunately for us, for most of us, we don't realize that if, I, if you tell me to follow you, and I follow you always loyally, because I don't want to be labeled dictator or this and that and that, I will never be in front of you. We follow the West. The West is developed. Would we develop faster than the West? No, because we will always be behind the West. I'm not anti-West. I'm not a racist. But I believe that Africa has passed through so much injustice that it is still, it is now unacceptable for us to accept the status quo. We must decide for ourselves. And we must take our responsibilities seriously. Our institutions, we must take them seriously. I, I don't think uh, the African Peace and Security Council should, should be subservient to the UN Peace and Security Council. Look at Asia. Most African countries, in fact, 98% of the African countries have more resources than 99% of the, the, the Asian countries. But the Asians are coming up. You will not hear one uh, Western head of state calling all the Asians to a meeting in his capital. And then you sit down, they bring the foreign minister, and he talks to his and starts, uh, you know, uh, you know, for us, for development, for we also give you assistance, you have to respect human rights, rule of law, and homosexuals. <laughs> Don't laugh, this is serious. So the Peace and Security Council, whoever, uh, I don't know who is uh, chairing it. You tell my brother that he must convene a meeting for this Sudan. Because uh, when the, 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 it started, I told uh, the Secretary General, he was in my office, I told him, look, I know South Sudan. And one thing we, all the time we, we are hearing skirmishes, and it's of a tribal nature. And if uh, President uh, 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 Salva Kiir doesn't treat this case carefully, it will be seen in the tribal context and it's going to explode. And unfortunately, this is the way it is seen. We cannot allow a tribal conflict in Africa because the, 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 the wounds will be so deep that it will be very difficult to heal. This is the problem now we have in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, 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 Balantas versus the rest. Everything there is seen in the context of tribe. And that is why it is a very, very entrenched problem in Guinea-Bissau. So, uh, uh, you tell my, bro my brother that I'm handing over to him, but if he doesn't call, convene a meeting, I will convene a meeting. <laughs> Either at, at this. No, because we cannot allow this. It could escalate, because the same tribes that you have in South Sudan, they are the same tribes you have in Kenya, and all the South, uh, South African countries.